Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at AP Chemistry Unit 6, Section 6, which is all about the stoichiometry of heat and enthalpy. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and uh, subscribe and ring that bell if you would. That way you will be uh, notified of all uh, these upcoming videos. Now as we talk about the stoichiometry of heat and enthalpy, let's take a look at this uh, fairly simple chemical reaction right here. Here we have 2Na solid plus Cl2 chlorine gas yields 2NaCl solid. And the delta H for that is negative 822 kilojoules per mole. What this means basically is that if you have two moles of sodium solid that are being reacted with one mole of chlorine gas, you're going to have two moles of sodium chloride solid produced. That's just the recipe for this reaction here. And this right here is telling us that 822 kilojoules of heat are being released. So since it's a release of heat, that negative sign right there tells us that this process is exothermic. Now, notice what happens when we reverse the process. Now, we can write this reaction basically in reverse, uh, just like we can with, with most reactions. In this case here, I've just flipped the reaction. Notice in this case, we have two moles of sodium chloride solid being decomposed, and the products are two moles of sodium solid and one mole of chlorine gas. But notice what happens to our delta H. When we flip the reaction, it changes the sign of delta H. So now for the reverse process, it is going to require an absorption of 822 kilojoules per mole. And that means that it would be endothermic. So, you know, flipping the reaction changes the sign of delta H. Now, we're going to use this concept and this idea of stoichiometry and the recipes here basically for producing uh, products along with delta H to solve a couple stoichiometry problems. So here's the first one we're going to look at. It says in the reaction below 10.0 grams of sodium chloride solid are produced. Determine the amount of heat released in this process in kilojoules. So we have the same reaction that we started out before and this time it says 10 grams of sodium chloride are produced. So I'm going to write that down as my starting value. That's what I'm given. And the question asks me to determine how much heat is released in kilojoules. So way down here at the end, I'm going to have kilojoules. Now, in our stoichiometry process, in fact, in just about any stoichiometry process, what's the first step? It's always convert to moles, isn't it? Just like we learned way back in Unit 4. So we're going to convert to moles, just like we always do. All roads lead to moles. So in my conversion factor, I have to put grams on the bottom here. And since I'm converting to moles, one mole has to go on top. And to find grams in a mole, I have to consult the periodic table. It looks like the molar mass of NaCl, sodium chloride, will be 58.44 grams in a mole. So I have that. I can cancel grams top and bottom. And so now I'm in moles of sodium chloride. Now the second step in a reaction stoichiometry problem is to do the mole ratio, right? Well, in this type of problem, whenever we have a, a heat or an enthalpy stoichiometry process, we can actually combine the second and the third step. Let me show you how I do that. I'm going to put moles of sodium chloride on the bottom so I can get rid of both the moles and the sodium chloride. And I'm going to put kilojoules on the top. Now, next to kilojoules, I'm going to have negative 822. That's right out of the delta H in the problem. And then that has an equivalence to two moles of sodium chloride. That's just the coefficient of that balanced equation for NaCl. So I have an equivalency here. And so now I can cancel out the moles. I can cancel out the sodium chloride. And so now I'm ready to do my math here to solve. I just take 10.0 divided by 58.44 times 
negative 822 divided by 2. And the answer I get is negative 70.3 kilojoules. Now, the negative right there implies that this is exothermic, that I'm actually releasing heat over the course of this process. So what this is telling me is that if I take 10 grams of sodium chloride and, and, and produce that in this process, I'm going to release 70.3 kilojoules of heat energy in that, in that process. Now, let's try one more problem here together. And this one says, this is a, a fairly lengthy question here. It says, a chemist adds 10.00 grams of calcium chloride to 500 milliliters of water at 23.50 degrees Celsius, stirs, and monitors the temperature while the calcium chloride dissolves. When the solute has dissolved completely, the temperature has risen to 27.00 degrees Celsius. Calculate the enthalpy of solution of calcium chloride. Assume that, that the solution has a density of 1.00 grams per milliliter and a specific heat capacity of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now, the problem here is asking us to find the enthalpy of solution. Now, enthalpy of solution, enthalpy of reaction, change in enthalpy, that's always going to be kilojoules per mole. Those are the units, kilojoules per mole. So that implies that I have to have actually two calculations here. I have to find kilojoules, I have to find the moles. Let's go ahead and find the uh, joules first. We'll do that joules and the kilojoules part first. So in order to do that, I use Q equals MC delta T, just like we learned in our earlier video about that. So we're gonna solve for Q, so we can see how many joules were transferred. Now M, is the mass of this solution total. Now, the total mass is the 10 grams of your calcium chloride plus your 500 milliliters or grams of water. That's the density. So the total mass of this solution is 510.0 grams. So we have to add those together to get the mass. Now the C is our specific heat. Well, the problem tells us that the solution has a specific heat of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. So that goes in for C, for this, uh, for this solution. Now delta T, it says that the solution rises from 23.50 degrees up to 27.00 degrees. That's a simple subtraction, and it's just 3.50 degrees Celsius, which is by how many degrees that temperature rose. When you multiply these together, we get 7,461 joules. So we're going to set that aside for a minute here. We have our joules, and now we're going to think about the moles. So that's our second step. We're going to find the moles of calcium chloride dissolved. Now that's a simple calculation because it tells us we started with 10.00 grams of calcium chloride. All we have to do is convert that to moles. So in our conversion factor, grams on bottom, one mole on top, and we consult the periodic table once again, and it's about 110.98 grams in a mole of calcium chloride. So now I can cancel grams and divide, and it's about 0 0.09011 moles of calcium chloride. So now all I have to do is find kilojoules per mole. Now that implies kilojoules divided by moles. So earlier in our first step, we found out that the joules were 7,461. I'm going to do a little sign uh, change here because I'm realizing that, that this is an exothermic process. Since the temperature goes up, it's exothermic. So I'm going to put a negative sign here just to signify that I know that the delta H is going to be a negative value for exothermic. Moles, well, we got that in our step two, 0.09011 moles. And when you divide this out, I get negative 82,800 joules per mole. Now, the question is, enthalpy of solution, we normally put that in kilojoules per mole, so I just divide this by 1,000, and, and this becomes negative 
kilojoules per mole. Now, what does this mean? Well, that means that we dissolved calcium chloride in water. So basically, this, this chemical process took place. The calcium chloride solid was dissociated into its component ions, the calcium ions and the two chloride ions. Well, the delta H for that process is negative 82.8 kilojoules per mole. We can calculate that and determine that in the lab fairly easily, as you can see right here. Hope you learned something about the stoichiometry of heat and enthalpy here. If you learned something, please slam that thumbs up button. And I hope to see you in our next video as we continue and do some more practice on Unit 6, Section 6, about heat and stoichiometry. I'm Jeremy Krug. Thanks for watching this video.